On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Jerome is going to give us a behind-the-scenes look at the UNO platform. Welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and we're in the cozy confines of Studio B today. And joining me is Jerome LeBain. Hey, Jerome. Hey, Robert. Thanks for coming by. Oh, that's that's a pleasure. It's, uh, it's, and it's cozy, for sure. <laughs> Jerome is the CTO of the UNO platform. Yes, I am. And it's been a, a very interesting ride for the past six years. Cool. So back in December, we had our good friend Martin Zickmund on the show, who gave people an overview of UNO. So if you guys haven't seen that, I highly recommend that. Um, basically, it's you take your UWP XAML and you can build Windows apps, iOS apps, Android apps, and WebAssembly, which is very cool. Absolutely. And Martin showed us that, gave us some demos, very, very cool stuff. And then I heard that you guys were in town, so I said, well, we should get the Uno guys on the show. Absolutely. Um, not so much to tell us how to use it, but um, I guess my first question is, where did this come from? You obviously had a need, and now here we are years later with an actual open source product. So how yes. that happen? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, it all started with Microsoft, as it, it always does. We're, uh, you know, the, the, the company behind Uno is, uh, is inventive. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's an agency that, does, uh, that, that used to be doing and still does uh, Windows phone applications and Civilite and WPF. And uh, for quite a while, we were doing Windows Phone application, then uh, so the 7 Series and 8 and 8.5, and then Windows 8, Windows 10, mm -hmm. and then we had a lot of developers that were doing uh, Savile and C Sharp. And then uh, things evolved, and people started asking us, well, do you know how to do uh, iOS apps as well? Right. And uh, at the time, uh, you know, uh, Xamarin was starting up uh, pretty pretty nicely. It was uh, still, I think it was renamed at the time uh, from Monotouch. So it's, uh, you know, Xamarin iOS got renamed yeah. uh, uh, by Miguel de Icaza. And, uh, and then we started poking around and, and we got to something that was uh, that was very interesting because we said we, we have to be able to reuse all those skills of the developers that we have yeah. at Inventive. And, uh, one, one thing led to another, you know, we started to implement a few controls and then, uh, you know, it started working pretty well. Then we added lots of, uh, lots of other controls and we got to do some very nice applications that, were, that are, are still running as of today um, uh, using the, the Uno platform. It was not called the, that, that at the time. Um, and we got to, uh, to continue doing this. And, and at some point, uh, you know, it made sense to just align everything with the UWP API. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you know what is now called uh, Win UI, or it's going right. to be called Win UI, Win UI three, and and those kind of release. And it's all about reusing skills, really. It, it, that's what it is. And also the fact that Microsoft, from the get go, uh, and uh, UWP and Win UI team uh, have been designing the API set with all those screens in mind, uh, from the very small screen, mm -hmm. uh, IoT, and yep. uh, new phones. And to the very large screen that you can do, we're going to find on Surface, uh, uh, the very large Surface and uh, and Hololens, right. and uh, or Xbox for that matter. So that means that they they thought about all those uh, concerns, and it made sense to to reuse all this and make sure that we can implement that contract properly and and target all of this. And in between, we we do it, we were doing this for iOS and Android, and then WebAssembly came in, and that's where it became very interesting to see in. At this point, we we didn't. It was closed source because we were developing that for our for our clients. Okay. Uh, and uh, we said, well, we 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 cannot keep that to ourselves. So like, people are going to be wanting to use that. So was that part? So I mean, if you look at something like Xamarin Forms, there's a XAML uh, that you use to express the UI, yes. and it's. I mean, XAML is XAML. On the one hand, XAML is XAML. It's not 100% the same as UWP, but if you know one, you can learn the other. And if you've Pretty never much. learned a XAML, you can just learn a XAML. Yes. And then when you compile, it builds into a Windows app, an iOS app, an Android app. So there's some type of, in the compile phase, it reads the XAML and knows how to translate that into native UI for iOS and Android, yes. as well as Windows. Obviously, um, the compiler in Visual Studio already knows how to do UWP into a Windows app that's already yes. there. Yes. So you didn't, did you have to write your own compiler, your own no, translator? No, no. You could so, hook into the one already <laughs> in Visual Studio? Somehow. Is it, that okay? A, a few things, but you no, know, the, the, 
the most interesting part of that is that we're we're leveraging everything that Xamarin is providing. You know, we're uh, everything that that uh, makes the Xamarin app. Uh, not talking about Xamarin Forms specifically, but Xamarin in terms of the binding to iOS and Android, mm -hmm. uh, where we're using all this. So every every single feature that comes out, uh, you know, latest of those is Hot, hot uh, Restart. Mm -hmm. the hot Restart works with uh, with with Uno apps. I mean, it's just a, a few lines of code to add, and then you can debug an iOS application usually in your phone from your Windows PC without a Mac. Okay. So it's something that 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 was added by the Xamarin team, and and we just being able to take advantage of that. So uh, the, key, the key part for iOS and Android is that it's not something that is so different. Uh, we're just sitting on top of Xamarin. That's pretty much it. Okay. So uh, the part of the XAML is a bit different uh, because the XAML is the, the XAML from WinUI. So what we did is uh, took a, uh, created a generator using the Roslyn API. Uh, so the, the, the very smart folks at the, the Roslyn API, they've been doing some amazing things there. And mm -hmm. we're taking uh, advantage of that to generate C Sharp from that XAML. And it, it's, yeah, okay. and that's, that C Sharp is basically a representation of the XAML. And that, that, that's an interesting thing because that means that you could probably just write your C Sharp directly and not use XAML instead. You know, or I could create my own ML. I could create row green ML. And as long as Why I was not? clever enough to write something using the Roslyn analyzer to spit out the right code, <laughs> that could be. That could be. I mean, well, it won't be, but but it could be. Is the key. You know, if, okay. if, you, if you take a look at the Xamarin, because it's interesting to understand the mechanics, right? Like yes. when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's really cool because you know, if if you have been doing um, UWP and you know that XAML, yes. yes, you can learn Xamarin Form XAML, but it's kind of cool not to have to. And then I was like, well, how do they build iOS and Android? And then I kind of discovered that you're just using the same Xamarin build tools. So yes. now there's some way of taking whatever ML, that XAML, um, and then just translating it or, or yes. building something that then yes plugs into the Xamarin engine and exactly. it, then after that you know all, all the work's done as long as you get it right exactly so okay. and, and that the the interesting cool. thing and the bit the, the very important piece of, of that, that language is that what we're doing is we're taking the XAML and generating C sharp and that C sharp is basically something that you could write in, in UWP directly mm -hmm. on Windows and then at runtime what we do is we take that tree that you're generating so let's say you have a grid stack panel text block and then that chain that chain or that that that, that the hierarchy that you're generating that is get, that gets translated into something that can be displayed okay uh, and it's using and that's a very important part it's using the native apis to do that and it's not and that, that's something I'm going to show you. I have a demo for that ex right. explicitly. Uh, and that's that's a confusion from people. And even Martin, like, when he tried to explain you that, it missed yeah. that specific part. I'm going to be explaining that. It, the, we're using the native APIs to show the control. So for instance, if you have a button, you can use a native button. Mm -hmm. But you can also use the XAML representation of a button. So you can draw right. your, if you want a, a video inside your button with the rounded corners with weird colors in it, you can do that. But mm -hmm. you can also use the native button instead. And you can switch between the two, so right. that's uh, that's where it gets interesting, and uh, it gives you the ability to to get from uh, something that your designers will love because it's going to be the same for all platforms, right. including the web, but also be able to say, well, I have a client that wants to use Uno and he wants to be using the native APIs and have the native look and feel. He can do that as well. And then because you're using UWP XAML, you don't have to write a designer. <laughs> There's already exactly. one in Visual Studio, exactly. and there's already exactly. a team adding things like IntelliSense and all yes. the, yes. the beautiful trickery. We had Dimitri Leyland on the show a while ago <laughs> yes. showing all these cool yes. tools, and you don't have to duplicate any of those because nope. you're using the existing XAML. Exactly, and the side right. effect of using that XAML is if there's a library or a piece of program that has been written that is using that same XAML, mm -hmm. it will work. Yeah. So you don't have to translate anything uh, to get that running. So that's right. why we have uh, the Windows Community Toolkit running, uh, you know, and it's getting better. So we have a, a set of controls that we're keeping updating to. to so we have a, in the re recent uh, updates of the, the Community Toolkits, the tab view that's working mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a control that the XAML Lama is uh, very fond of, uh, and that control is, is working now. So, um, so how did you decide to, 
I mean, you mentioned Xamarin before. Prior to being purchased by Microsoft, Xamarin was a, a was not free, and it was actually kind of pricey. Yes. And now it's obviously just a piece of Visual Studio. Um, Uno platform is open source and free. And free. How did free you decide use. that part? So. Uh, Thank the, you, by the way. <laughs> of course. I mean, of, of course. I love so, it as a user, but as a company, how do you how do you decide that part? You as uh, if if you're if you want to uh, if you want to use the, uh, the the Uno, you can just go over to GitHub and then download the packages mm -hmm. or from uh, NuGet and then just use it. What is interesting for us is then saying if you if something doesn't work for you or you want an update or you want a, a new feature, then. You can implement it yourself and, right. and send a pull request. That, that works really well, and we have uh, over 130 contributors now in uh, in our in our in our, in our, in our GitHub. So is that kind of the math? We can get money now, or we can save money later. Uh, well, no, it's 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 more about if you if you come to us and say I want to have that feature implemented, we have mm -hmm. professional services and 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 people that are that are going to be implementing those features, and it's about you know managing the priorities of the backlog that we have for implementing features. Right. That that's exactly how we're doing it, and we've been implementing uh, we've been using Uno at, uh, as part of Inventive to make all those apps. We have uh, over two hundred apps that are running now, okay. and for us, it's we use it. We we live yeah. you know, and the company's based off of that, and we had that okay. model. Before open sourcing Uno, right. so we're we're, we're designing Uno uh, based on the fact that Inventive Inventive is using it to build apps. Right. So so you were going to do it anyway, exactly. And then you decide you said, okay, we can just do it anyway and just keep it ourselves, or we could do it anyway and productize it. You make some money, but now you're on the hook for support. Yes. Or you can do it anyway, open source it, and now you get more of. Uh, the ecosystem and more people contributing to it, so exactly. you grow your development team on something you were going to do anyway. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we get it's people actually, that, are, that are very interesting. Cool you know, world. People yeah. are, are are contributing to add macOS support to Uno. Right. <laughs> this is amazing. So uh, yeah, that that's what we're looking for, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, getting people interested and in, in, you know, filing bugs. There was. Um, uh, Morton from uh, from the, a very important, a very uh, a, a interesting person from the Windows community that that uh, started looking at Uno and said, "Oh, that V6 that you've made for creating new templates from uh, for for Uno apps, it doesn't have the tags in in the, the creation of a, of a new project. I'm gonna add that." Okay. Just made a PR and then that's it. Right. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing that makes it so interesting yep. to work with with open source that anyone can contribute and uh, and it ma and makes the platform uh, move forward for everyone. And Microsoft supports you guys and is happy to see it. I imagine. Oh uh, yeah. So Microsoft, yes, yes. So I mean, it's all about pushing .NET. Right. I mean, that, that's what we're doing. We're, we yep. we love the ecosystem. We love um, you know making sure that .NET moves forward. We want to push C Sharp to the web. We're using yep. all the tooling that's available here. Uh, you know uh, the WCT folks uh, and uh, Michael Hawker specifically, Zamal Lama, is helping us as well. You know, uh, providing feedback and adding features there as well. Uh, we got the uh, the Xamarin Forms guys that have been helping us uh, as well for uh, the implementation of the Xamarin Forms renderers. Mm -hmm. uh, so being able to take a, um, a Xamarin Forms app and then make it run on the web. Yeah. Using uh, using WebAssembly, yeah. Uh, so they've been helping us, you know, testing out features and things like that, so that we can uh, make that feature feature move forward. Cool. So that that's very interesting, and <laughs> you as well, <laughs> of course. So yeah, Microsoft's helping, that's for sure. Awesome. So I guess those are the the kind of the questions I had. Um, now it's your turn to to lead the discussion. Sure. Um, so Martin was on. Uh, on the show in December, I assume yes. new things have happened since yes. then. Lots, lots of those, lots of those. So <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be showing you uh, what's hot so lately. Over to your laptop. Um, yeah. What's hot lately, especially with uh, the release of the uh, the um, the release of the Surface Duo and mm -hmm. uh, all of those libraries, and I'm gonna be showing you something that uh, that has been uh, used by Microsoft uh, to demo lots of uh, uh, features around. Um, uh, it's me. Uh, to paint view, so that that is a control that Microsoft is pushing uh, as part of the Surface uh, yeah. to paint view. That there it is. Uh, so what we did, and because Uno is something that uh, is using the WinUI API, mm -hmm. that control that you see on the screen is the exact control that Microsoft uses inside the WinUI two point four. That's an upcoming release, uh, and 
that is used on both uh, that is both used on both Neo and Duo. Uh, the the uh, Xamarin Forms folks have, have been doing the same control, and that control is the exact same code that you will find in WinUI. So it okay. behaves the exact same way. So for instance, uh, I can take that that app and and put it on the on the second screen like this like that. Put it in the middle, and when it's uh, resizes and place itself in the middle, then you're going to see that a second part has been uh, shown in on the side. And that is code that I have not developed. I don't, if I look at the, I, uh, some of the features, I, I don't know some and some of what those, right. do, those do. I looked at the documentation when that happened and that's very interesting to see because, uh, you know, it's <laughs> just the same code and we're, we're down to even reusing uh, the same UI tests. For that part, so mm -hmm. the the Uno tooling uses that, so uh, it's very interesting to, to see what you can do so with that, that. Again, is one of the benefits of of what you're doing is that you just inherit things that show up exactly in UWP and in what Microsoft supports exactly. There was there some work you had to do. Uh, well, um, I mean, what happens if I put that in an app and then I run it on? I create an iOS app out of it. It will run so that it, it will run the same way. So that control is able to work even if there's I'm, no two screens. Okay. Uh, that control works for, for yeah. that. It's able to actually. You, you, so the way it works is that you can set a size for run one pan, one side of the screen or one side of the pane and then okay. another side of the pane and then if the window resizes or if you are on an iPad and you have a, you know let's say you dock the the window or dock the app on one side or mm -hmm. run other then okay. the control will adjust itself uh, properly. So that's okay. that's the kind of thing that we we're adding. Uh, uh, in in the platform, so that's uh, that's quite amazing that cool. we can actually do reuse that kind of things. And that allowed us that control. I like, it, it took me let's say four hours to port something yeah. like that. So it's okay. very very easy to do. Uh, and uh, you know, it took Microsoft some time to develop that kind of that right. kind of controls and and thought into the, the thought that that were that was put into designing proper uh, you know. Yeah, uh, concerns and properties and things like that to 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 make sure that the control behave properly right. and on the duo. It's, it's a new thing. These it's, these dual screen phones are a yes. new thing. So you can imagine the next several years that things will change. Of course, that, of course. You know, V one of the UI will will then become V two, which will then become V three, etc. Yes. and we're gonna update uh, as, right. as as we go, and we're gonna mm -hmm. take the updates that Microsoft is gonna be making in, in uh, inside of WinUI, okay. and uh, you know follow along. So that's uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the the their interesting thing of uh, of being able to reuse code because the APIs are are yeah. the same. <laughs> so that, that's uh, that's one interesting part. Um, another demo that I want to to show you is uh, is the the notion of uh, of styling. So when you look at um, Let's say I'm going to be putting that application aside. I'm going to be launching an, another one, which is that application. I'm going to be using that on the side. Let's let's keep the other one on okay. the side because. Uh, so um, what I what I have here is the application that that I have here. So let's me just bump up that so we can see it better. There. So what I've done is I have a grid, and inside I have a, a, a checkbox, a slider, a button, and a toggle switch. Mm -hmm. So those are. Windows controls, you know, in in the in the pure sense, in a yep. way, you are. And if you put that inside of a Windows application or in an Uno, iOS, Android, or web, it's going to look like this, right, on that side. So that means that, and it, it looks like a Windows control. It looks very and, familiar. And exactly. The uh, thing is that sometimes you may not want that. You may want an actual control that looks like the Android one, and those are not the Android ones. So the interesting part about Uno is that you can style a control at runtime to change its behavior or it change its appearance to change from a XAML-ish control to mm -hmm. a native control. So what yeah. I did here is I bound uh, that checkbox to change the style of those controls. So when I do this, I change the style of those controls. So it's re-rendering completely and it allows me to, to change the visual <laughs> aspect of that control. So uh -huh. there it is. If that's the that's the original one. You see, there's the, even the visual cues of the Android controls. <laughs> so why would you do that? You don't. You don't. <laughs> you don't. But that's to show that's to to show a point of okay. saying <laughs> that uh, it's it's up to you, the developer, to choose what you want to show, and it's not bound to. Uh, I want to choose for the the whole app what it looks like. I can choose mm -hmm. per control, per instance of a control. It's actually an interesting option to offer users, right? To 
have things look like a Win 10 app, look the same across. And, and, you know, maybe you maybe you may want to say that you know if a user is picky, if a user is picky and then you right. change your UI completely and, yep. and provide something else. Okay. And the, the way I implemented it is basically, I data binding a style for Xamarin projects only, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, say that the uh, the is check property of my checkbox that above that uses a converter that tells uh, let's say for the slider slider switch that's at the top. I'm going to be using either the native default style, hmm. which shows the actual Android or iOS, depending okay. on where it runs, or the XAML default slider that use that is the one that you're going to be seeing when you're on Windows hmm. directly. So that's cool. that's how you can switch between the two. Mm -hmm. So that's to show that it's not frozen when you're building right. your app. You can change it even at runtime, even if it doesn't make sense in that kind of <laughs> in that kind cool. of scenario. Uh, so that that's uh, that's to explain that that very specific picture, and it's something that people, especially people that do know about XAML, don't uh, don't get the, the the on the get go. They think you know it's XAML, so it's probably just one way. And data binding styles can be done. It can be yeah. can be doing that kind of uh, that kind of feature cool. set. And is that in the current? Version or is that coming? No, no, it's it's been there since the beginning. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a, it's a feature. So the the um, uh, the very important thing is that we have design at, at Inventive. We have designers that are very picky, mm -hmm. and they, they want to have they want to have that design. You know the the, okay. the the actual one. They you know they want that slider to be blue and very specific size. Right. And so they want that kind of things. But there are also occasions where uh, you know having the right design. Uh, you know, the, the native uh, platform design makes sense because you know it's a small app, and then you don't want to design those controls because it can be complicated to do. Yep. Uh, so that's where it makes sense to use the native control. So you can choose uh, whenever you want. Okay, cool. So uh, so that that's uh, that's the one, and then I'm going to be talking about another feature that we we announced um, from WebAssembly. Uh, that's uh, AOT support. So AOT is uh, it was we call a, what is called a ahead of time compilation. Mm -hmm. And it's for WebAssembly. The idea is that uh, at this point, and that's uh, that's what Blazor is doing at this point, is that uh, when you have C# -sharp running in your browser, it's actually taking the IL that comes from the DLLs, and it's running that. Uh, it's not compiling that to WebAssembly. It's keeping that as IL, and then the mono runtime takes that and executes that on the flow. That means that uh, while it can take anything, an interpreter is not as fast as running. You know, code that is right. targeted for the platform that's underneath, and WebAssembly in that case. And uh, and what we see, what we've seen is that uh, WebAssembly that uh, an IL interpreted on WebAssembly is about thirty to forty times slower mm. than running using uh, compiled down to a to a, a WebAssembly code. So that takes a, a toll uh, yeah. in, in in an application and. Uh, uh, up until now, the only ability to compile to WebAssembly was to use Linux. Uh, and uh, we posted a while back the ability to use uh, the uh, Windows system, system for Linux, WSL, mm -hmm. to compile that to WebAssembly. And then uh, recently we made an update that allows to use that completely from Visual Studio. So mm -hmm. you can build that from Visual Studio without having to run any command line inside of uh, WSL. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gives you the ability to build AOT from Visual Studio. But what I want to show you is that, yes. and that's another feature, uh, is that you can use C++ that you compile down to WebAssembly inside of a C Sharp app. Really? Yes, and that 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 is the interesting part. So what I'm going to be showing you now is, um, and it's a side effect of adding AOT from Windows. <laughs> it's <laughs> the, that gives the ability uh, to do that kind of uh, that kind of development. So what I have here. Uh, let's say I'm going to be looking at the, the my page. So it's a very simple app. Uh, my XAML just has a uh, a text block with Hello World in it and okay. a, a click button. And inside, I'm going to be finding a DLL import. So <laughs> for those who have been doing mm. things for a while, uh, you know, and and .NET for a while, may be familiar with that. The idea is that what you're you're saying at your C# -sharp program, I'm going to be calling that method that comes from somewhere else. It's not .NET. Mm -hmm. It comes from a import that uh, something exported over. Uh, in Windows, that means that you're referencing most of the time a DLL that yeah. has some exports, and then you're calling that method from that DLL. What we did for, for WebAssembly is basically map that to be able to say that method I'm calling, it's coming from another WebAssembly module that's linked in when building the, the overall application. So what we're doing is basically that method, it's implemented in, the, in that file. Uh, that that I call my module that cpp mm -hmm. here. So it's basically 
a plus b. I'm calling that from uh, from my page. And uh, what I'm going to be doing right now is just uh, compiling that compiling that uh, method so we can see what it does. So it's going to be running my application. And uh, so I built it already so you can see the results uh, from the beginning and, 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 and see the, the proper results. Oh, OK. So I, <laughs> I built it with the previous one. So I'm going to be rebuilding it. So let's see that. Um, so what it does here is basically compile a C sharp, then calls some uh, native tooling that's called mscripten uh, that calls mono to generate some uh, uh, some WebAssembly code, mm -hmm. and it takes in as well some external external WebAssembly code that is linked in, and then mono just does the, the connection between the two and provides you with a you know single experience that you can just execute right away in your mm -hmm. browser. Um, and uh, so you don't see it when it's building, but it's mm -hmm. actually calling WSL in, 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 the, in the back. Uh, it's actually calling uh, a lot of other things like uh, you know, mono.net, uh, .net core inside of the WSL. Uh, WSL. So um, you know, the, the tooling is just doing calls, uh, executing bash commands uh, in behind it. And it's amazingly uh, you know, powerful. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just done all on on all on the on the back, and you don't see anything. It's just it takes a bit of time, and that's why we 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 don't suggest to to do that all the time. But when it does, uh, when it when it builds and it gives you the the proper results, so that's probably just the first the first build. Okay. Uh, but then afterwards, uh, it gets uh, it gets you running, and you get your application running. Right. That's a technique that we use in the calculator, by the way, uh, Windows calculator. Yeah. Did Martin yeah, yeah. show that? I think he's yeah, shown yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Not so, only did he show that, I started adopting it. That's the calculator <laughs> I oh, use on this. You, excellent. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's uh, it's it's been it's interesting. Awesome. So it's we're, we've been building that, and so what I you know the application that I that I've uh, executed, so it's still building. Okay. Um, so we'll let that go. Uh, for a while we saw <laughs> yes, it. We saw it's it probably going to come back. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's been very interesting to be able to integrate all that, and that means that for people uh, to be able to reuse, you know, let's say for Rust code or yep. Go code or anything that's been compiled to uh, web. Oh, there it is. Yep. Uh, compiled down to WebAssembly, mm -hmm. and uh, and reuse that without doing anything. So that cool. one is forty one. Nice. And if I change that my C plus plus module here, instead of doing that, I want the, the actual truth and not just a partial truth uh, 41 and 142. I can just execute my little scripts. So that is compiling my C++ into a WebAssembly module, mm -hmm. which is very fast. Uh, and uh, it's a little script that I put here. I can, can show you that. It's just uh, mscript and cc okay. takes my C++ modules, compiles it down to bitcode, which is the intermediate language uh, that uh, LLVM uses. So it's basically like a DLL, if you will. It's a very you know, dumbed down mode. Um, and then if I rebuild my application, uh, I'm changing that, <laughs> uh, then it, it's going to take again my new module and then okay. build it into the application and, and do uh, the proper results. Cool. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun uh, being able to uh, plug all those things together and have a, uh, you know, a functioning ecosystem, and uh, you know, pull in all those things that are you know the two point view works in the web. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's that's, that's cool. where it gets interesting. And we're going to be adding support. That's on the thing that are on the future. We're going to be adding support for um, uh, the Duo SDK okay. uh, for uh, web applications. So that means that uh, if you have an application that uses the two point view on uh, you know in, in your web assembly application, then if you go to a Duo or a Neo mm -hmm. inside of Edge. Then you're gonna have the support for the hinge oh, and nice. support for the for the two screens. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's very interesting to 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 have as a you know, as a feature set. Right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Awesome. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, you no. Know, at this point, no. Okay. Well, I, I can show. I, I don't have a demo for that, but uh, we've been we've been poking at uh, advanced features of WebAssembly and many threads. And threading Ooh, is something wow. that has been missing for for uh, for .NET applications, and I've been able to uh, you know I tweeted a, a little bit uh, about that a, a few days before, um, where basically you can update the UI from a background thread, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to make for very very performant applications when you can push work on the background. Yeah. Because at this point, most of the WebAssembly applications. Uh, on .NET specifically, uh, they've only been able to use the main thread. So if you're doing deserialization on the main thread, 
it's not a good idea because your application right. stalls and totally. it's not something that you want to 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 have so uh, uh that that is something that's going to be uh, interesting um and last but not least the uh, mac os uh, that is something that we're looking at. Yeah, uh, people have been asking for that for a long time, uh, and uh, lots of people have you new know, Macs and want to be developing on on their Macs, uh, but they 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 want to be able to you know take that app and put it on right. the web and put it on, on Windows, and then they don't want to have the you know that's uh, uh, something that people have been interested in uh, in developing for. Yeah, and with be cool for and with. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, thanks so much for. Coming by, I'm glad you guys oh, yeah. were in town. We're able to, it was fun. to do this. Yeah, it was fun. Awesome. Thank you very much stuff. for inviting me. All right, hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.